I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and another episode of What's for Dinner. Tonight we have an old-fashioned favorite from my childhood. These are old-fashioned pan-fried pork chops. These are boneless pork loin chops that are dredged in a traditional breading and pan-fried the old-fashioned way. Just like my nanny used to make them and this used to be one of my favorite things when I was a kid. And now my kitchen smells exactly like my grandmother's kitchen and that makes me happy because I know she's here with me. So let's go see how we make these old-fashioned pan-fried pork chops. All right, we're gonna get started and basically we're gonna make these fantastic old-fashioned pan-fried pork chops. Now this was a childhood favorite of mine. This is something nanny, my nanny, was my mother's mother, uh, would make often. Now I lived with my nanny and my Aunt Joan for a period of time when I was in college and um, I would work and go to school and when I would come home in the evening uh, nanny would have saved dinner because they would have often eaten earlier than I did and then she would sit down with me while I ate. Well, this was one of my favorite things that she would ever make and this is a pan fried pork chop and I'm gonna make it for you today. I don't make these very often because quite frankly it doesn't make them special if you have them all the time. Mm -hmm. So what I have is six very thick cut center cut pork loin chops and these are boneless. This is how I prefer them. If you prefer them bone in then you go right go right, right ahead and do that. Now keep in mind when you do a bone in chop you're gonna have to cook them for a little bit longer than a boneless. Um, we're gonna start with a basic breading station and I have in here about a cup of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of black pepper. And all I'm gonna do is mix that up because this is just gonna be our first dredge. Now I have rinsed off my pork chops and so they're, they've been clean. Always rinse your meat. If you've got whole pieces of meat, always rinse your meat. So we're gonna put it in the flour and then we're gonna put it right here. I have two eggs and a cup of milk and a pie plate. I'm gonna give it a few dashes of Tabasco sauce. Nanny never did that. That's all me. And I'm just gonna take my fork and get in here. and mix this up together. Okay, and that's not what I wanted to do with my fork, but that's okay. <laughs> Over here I have two cups of Italian seasoned breadcrumb to which I have added a teaspoon each of pink salt, garlic powder, chicken seasoning. This is my sedged chicken seasoning that is optional. You can use a salt-free version. You can do whatever seasoned salt you like and a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. And that I'm just going to kind of blend together. Poultry, poultry seasoning goes with pork and chicken. and chicken. Yes. Anytime you use pork, you can um, always rest assured that if you have a, a chicken seasoning or poultry seasoning on hand, that is going to go perfectly to season your pork because it is the other white meat. Mm -hmm. My mom always used poultry seasoning to season pork. And really, if you think about it, breakfast sausage has a lot of sage in it. You know, we season chicken and turkey mm -hmm. with sage, so. All right, so the simple part here is, now you don't have to put your um, flour in a bag. I just do put my flour in the bag, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna dredge it. Get it in there, make sure all the, all the sides are covered in the flour, put it in the egg, dip it on both sides, and then dredge it in the breadcrumb. Make sure, what I like to do is get it down in that breadcrumb and then just kind of toss the breadcrumb over the top and then take my fork and give it a pat. And then this is, you know, this is one of those jobs you got to do with your hands, folks. So um, if you don't like to touch raw meat, you feel free to use some gloves. I've been doing this so long, it doesn't bother me anymore. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to dredge the rest of these and cover them with the breadcrumb mixture. And for um, just have a turn around, and I'm going to show you that on my stove, I have my 10-inch cast iron skillet. I have one quart of sunflower oil in here heating. You want this to heat to approximately 350 degrees. 
Um, I'm just going to test it and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how we fry these. All right, we are ready to fry our pork chops. We have gone ahead and we have coated them all. And that's what you want to see right there. That nice sizzle when you pop it into the hot oil. And you never want to uh, put your oil more than halfway up the side of your pan because as you put your pork chops in there, the oil will displace and then you're going to have a dangerous mess uh, if you overfill it. Now, I'm probably only going to fit five in here at this point. And that's fine. You don't want to crowd your pan, but maybe I can get six in here. You're going to want to cook these now for about 12 minutes, and then you're going to want to check them for doneness. There we go. We are going to halfway through flip them over. I will bring you back when it's time to do that. All right. We are, it has been six minutes and we are ready to turn over our pork chops. And that's how you want them to look. Now the one in the middle is probably going to look a little darker because when you use cast iron, that always happens. Just be very careful, okay? If you have to, kind of flip it over onto another chop there and then gently nestle it back down into the oil because... You can splash yourself, and in a perfect world, you have a splatter screen, but my pan is very large, and I have yet to find a splatter screen that's big enough to cover it. Now, I have two skillets that are this same size, and if there's somebody out there that makes a splatter screen that's big enough to cover this 14-inch skillet, then I would love a resource for that, because... I'm about ready to have Rick make me one out of some window screen and some wire. <laughs> so we flipped them over. We're going to cook them for another six minutes. And when we come back, we're going to test the internal temperature of the pork chops, which should be between 160 and 165, at which point we will take them out of the hot oil and we will put them on this cooling rack and we'll let them drain and we'll let them rest for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to start getting all of my other sides ready. Right, these are ready to come out and like I said I'm just going to pull them out and I'm going to place them here on this cooling rack to drain and to cool. Now your carryover cooking is going to finish off um, the inside but just to be safe you do want to grab your your meat thermometer and test it. So here I have my instant read digital thermometer. And I'm going to use the thickest chop that I have right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to stick it right in the middle. And remember, as it sits, the internal temperature is going to continue to climb a bit. And if we hit 160, I'm thinking we're probably just fine. All right, so we're at 160, and it's still climbing because, like I said, as these rest, the internal temperature is going to continue climbing and carryover cooking is going to occur. So we're going to let these rest. I'm going to clean up my mess. I'm going to cook my potatoes and my corn and my gravy. And then we're going to fix you a plate of old-fashioned pan-fried pork chops for dinner. So we'll be back. Who could resist that dinner plate? I don't know anybody who could. Well, maybe somebody, but they're crazy. Mm -hmm. Pork chops are one of my favorite things ever, and they're delicious if they're cooked just right. And I have to tell you, these are cooked just right because mm -hmm. we did sample. We did. You know, quality control being what it is, it's very sure. important to us. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cut into this for you. Now, 
It's perfectly done. Moist. It's moist and it's delicious. Oh, I'm gonna just make Rick. See, it's just like coming right apart. It's so good. You ready, honey? Mm -hmm. Let's give you a full bite here. And I just made white pan gravy. I took uh, most of the oil out of the pan and then I used a little flour, seasoned it up with some chicken bouillon and uh, added some milk and some water. And um, I got the gravy to the consistency that I like. I have a video on how to make white gravy, so it's really easy. And um, I'll link it down below. You can give that a try. But I'm telling you folks. That is heaven. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. So that is how you make a delicious pan fried pork chop to perfection. I hope you give it a try and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you like what you watch today and I hope that you try it and I hope that you love it. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!